right. You were born. Net controllers are not born. They're trained. They're experienced. They're practiced. They, they learn something new every day. Do I make mistakes on that? Yes. And I've been doing it for years. I still make mistakes. I get tongue tied. Sometimes I can't read my own writing. I literally wrote down a call sign the other day. I wrote it down right and I read it back wrong. <laughs> and I did it not once but twice. To the same guy. <laughs> it's always the same person. Right. <laughs> I, don't know. I just went brain dead for a second. It happens. Okay. Effective leadership. Remember, as a communications team lead or as the net controller, you are the leader. You've got to motivate people. You've got to make sure that they feel confident in you. You've always got to know what's going on. Remember the old adage, if you can't baffle them with your intelligence, baffle them with your BS. Okay? No matter what's going on, you've got to seem like it's exactly what you expected, and that you know exactly what you're doing. When you're looking back with your buddy, go, hey, find this in the book. Tell me what the hell to do next. <laughs> okay? How do we make this work? All right, it's going to happen, but you've got to put that air of confidence out there because if you go to pieces, what happens to the rest of your net? Hey, all the pieces. to pieces. Right down to two. Be decisive, make quick and appropriate decisions. The guy says, I'm at the bottom of the dam. Should I move to the top? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't require a whole lot of decision making. Okay. But it does require to make an appropriate, quick decision. Just think about those skills. And they are learned. They need to be practiced. How about record keeping? 99% of us, unless we're on HF or not, they go right along, right? We don't recall it every conversation we have on two meter. One is not a requirement, and two is a little crazy. You're driving down a road, you talk to ten people. Hang on, I gotta pull over. Fill out the law, or you continue on. Talk to another ten, pull over, come up and What we do on HF? Who operates on HF without keeping a law? I like that. I like that. I've actually done classes before that question's been asked. And people raise their hand. I'm going. Really? Um, no, HF, you always want to maintain a log one. Um, but in any emergency operation, we maintain a log. It doesn't matter what frequency we're on, we maintain a log. Initially, what I tell people when they're just learning, Linda, for, I'm going to pick on Linda here for a minute. You know, she was one of our net controllers last year for the tag award. And day one, her primary function, she was rec doing the record, the recording. Because she was learning, I said, just log it all. Log it all initially. You'll learn, and she did, as the day wore on, and the next day, she finally got to learning. This is what really needs to be logged. All this nonsense just doesn't. You quickly learn that. So you need to be able to write, think, and talk at the same time. Multitasking, walking and chewing gum, without walking into a wall. Having your net scripts ahead of time, the assignments, your materials, everything you need. That's why your go kit's important. So you're not searching for stuff. How do you deal with a uh, burned out operator? Relieve them. Relieve them. Hmm? Relieve them. Relieve them. Relieve them. Or her. Send them home. You can't rely on them, you just got to set them home. Okay. Don't be afraid to walk up and say, dude, you're whipped, you're out of here, you're worn out, go home. Some people are mission oriented. We actually run into this all the time with the IMT and the public safety professionals. We are so mission oriented that we can go and go and go and go. I have done 36 and 72 hour operations. Okay?
trust me, by the time you're at that point, you don't even know which ends up. You're lucky if you can recognize your name. But your focus is so much on the goal when your adrenaline's up. You're still functioning, and you're functioning in that realm. But if they take you out of that and away from that goal, away from that, that mission that you're on, you're lost. And you just you fade out. You're done. Okay, and you will crash. So you want a preferred out operator. And people can burn out at different times. I might be able to take 12 or 24 hours. Okay. Ken might be able to take 12 minutes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Ken, I didn't Drive. Drive. <laughs> Okay. But you see what I'm saying? People do it in different, you know, different hit levels at different times. And it depends on a whole lot of things. It can depend on age. It can depend on health. It can depend on mm -hmm. family issues. It can de depend on any number of stressors that make that a difference. You've got to be aware of it. Can you tell what that is? Hang on. Can you tell what that is over the air? Can you tell when somebody's becoming burned out? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. You're, going to, you're going to hear change in it. You're going to hear a coherency change. You're going to probably hear a voice level change. And you don't get into the discussion on the air, you get them on the phone. If you can do it by phone, and you chat with them, and then you send them as quick as you can. I had, I had a field tech who had been working 12 hours. He's diabetic. Who could not get him to go eat? <laughs> I just, this was one of the guys I worked with in uh, oh. video conferencing. Customer finally ended up, got, and then got food and brought it back. <coughs> Eat. Yeah. Stop. You must. Yeah. There are people who just forget to eat. All right. How about the delegation? Yeah. Anybody ever walk in and have somebody that's a manager or is the person in charge? <coughs> you're sitting over there doing this and they're running around with this in the wall and this and this. They're doing all these things and everybody else is just sitting there. You ever had somebody who was like that as a manager or a yes. yeah. They don't last. They don't. They burn out quickly. Delegation. Trust me. It's going to be delegated. Because my goal as the manager is to sit back and do this and watch everybody <laughs> work. And go with the Apple game. It's Troubleshoot. working good. Troubleshoot. Okay. Yeah, I'm monitoring. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making sure it's all running smooth. My eyes are like this. I'm monitoring. I'm contemplating the mission statement. Okay? We want to make sure that we delegate. Don't take it all on you, especially if you become a, a communication team leader. You've got to delegate. Because you have to, as the team leader, as in that controller, as the person in charge, you have to maintain a situational awareness. You have to know what's going on around you. If you do not have that situational awareness, you're going to lose focus. Then that's going to suffer. And delegate. Hmm? For record keeping, is the net control station the only one that keeps logs, or are the field operators expected to keep logs also? Every station keep keep a log for themselves. And the other question is: Is there any update on the? State's new law regarding communications while driving. The hands free law. I knew that was going to come up today. <laughs> <laughs> there were some discussions at the EOC uh, with a couple of folks that were there, um, including a five minute discussion that was had with the governor. Um, he claims to understand the situation and said that the appropriate action would be taken. What that means, I don't know. You know how politicians are. That's called being committal, being, that's called being non -commit, or committal while being non committal. It was a definite meeting. Uh, public safety officers and public... Law enforcement, EMS, fire, etc. They're all exempt, but under, under a... Uh, Conditions where there's emergency, is that exempt anyone who's operating in that emergency? Department? No. 
as the law is currently written and restricts us. Write your representative and senator for the state and tell them to make sure we are excluded. Every state that has instituted a hands-free law has had to go back except for one. Every one of them has had to go back after the fact and amend the law to exclude amateur radio. And the reading, I was, you know, from your announcement from the last meeting here a couple days ago, um, I went on the website and looked for the bill, and as I read it, it excluded ham radio operators only for immune emergency communications while it's all record. I haven't seen that specific to that it's yeah. been changed. Well, it, it, it was, I mean, I'm not, I haven't looked at the website again, but it did say for emergency communications. Was that so somebody's say, interpretation no, or was, was that in the actual document? It was in the document, but that's still not good enough for what, for what we would want. Right. want to do just because the way it was read on the floor, there was no exclusion for amateur radio. Mm -hmm. And we need to have that exclusion. Um, because we could be, you may not be actually involved in the actual emergency or disaster, but you're in route. I still need to talk to you. Okay? Because you're not officially logged into the system, you're not officially signed in, meaning you haven't walked up to our resource group and you haven't signed in. You don't have a little card sitting over here going, this is John Doe with Amateur Radio. He's signed in so we can track you. You're not officially there until you're officially there. And the exemption would cover drills. Right. right. Or, or it doesn't cover exercises. If you had chlorine, then amateur radio operator responding to an emergency situation. So that means you can involve responding. Hmm? I'm reading the exact quote right now. An amateur radio operator responding to an emergency situation. So that basically means the emergency is right here, so I'm trying to call for help. Yeah, it's poorly worded. That's why they've got to have made it worded. All right. Let's see. Remember incident command. We work within the incident command. Where do we fall in incident command? <laughs> incident commander's up here. Where are we? Are we there? Yeah, we're we're in here. charge of it. Okay. The only thing we're in charge of is ourselves. Like I said, book learning will not make you a competent NCS. You can read the SOP all day long. You can memorize that stuff. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it. Practice. It has to come naturally. You can't be looking in the book going, okay, how do I do a tactical map? Okay. How do I do this? How do I do that? That's not the time. Weekly training nets, classrooms, tabletop exercises, and regular scheduled training nets. We're going to have all those things. We ran a communications exercise earlier this year. Only a few people played. We did a 213 message drill. And it was very simple. I put a message out to everybody on the net. Asked them three questions. Do you have a home weather station? If so, what's the make? What's the model? Send it, send your response, the next net, to the station that checks in before you. Pretty simple, right? You know how, how many you know how many are 213 responses I have back that made the full circle? Three. Mm -hmm. One. Two. There were 23 people to check in that night. I have two sitting on my desk that made the response all the way around. Got passed back to me. That's pretty pathetic, folks. If you don't practice these things, then I get people going, well, I want more, more exercises where I can send messages. I just gave you one. 
and you didn't send a message. Well, I wasn't sending a message to you. It'll get to me. The idea was everybody got an idea to copy. I said that to everybody. So everybody copies. Now you get to transmit it to the next station. You get practice transmitting. They get practice receiving. And they may not have been on that previous net. So they get practice receiving and practice sending. Everybody gets <coughs> practice. That's what it was for. So we want to do that. Can we come in here and run tabletop exercises and set up a couple of net control stations and just sit around the table and somebody's net control and we pass traffic? Yes. Sure. We don't have to do it on the air. We can sit here in the classroom and do it. That would be great. We can run an actual drill. Okay, I can put one group in here and one group in the other room and a group upstairs. We could probably simplex throughout the building. Yeah, if possible. Might have to use 77 meters, but you know, we could probably get through. You know, floor to floor, door to room to room. Okay. But we could do that. But if we can't get that type of participation on a Thursday night for a 30 minute nap, it just gets that. You know, I'm really happy that all of you showed up today. On a holiday weekend. It's getting the training. It's getting that commitment within yourself to get it. Because every one of you can be called to be that control. Am I always going to be available? No. No. I'm deployable anywhere in the state of North Carolina. Okay? Back before Hurricane Forrest arrived, I sat starting that Monday. I was downtown twice a day for a briefing and planning session. Wednesday, I pulled in Stacy because she was available, and I pulled in Nick Gabitas at 8 or NG8M at all, and because they were both available. We put them through one hour just in time training on WebEOC, just enough to know how to get into it where to go, to read the messages, and they were told, do not enter a damn thing in it, though. <laughs> but this is where you can see the information. Write it on the screen for paper, I'll, I'll enter it. Okay? And the reason I did that was that Tuesday morning, prior to the Wednesday, State EOC called me. They wanted me to deploy the new one. Yeah. Of course, I turned around and looked at August Vernon, who's the emergency manager, and said, August, can I go? He goes, no. <laughs> Can't go, State, sorry. They called me up that afternoon. I'd like you to go to Wilmington. August, can I go? No. Can't go. Okay, because he was not releasing any of his team members until we knew exactly what Florence was going to do. Reality is, I'm not necessarily going to be here, so somebody's got to pick up the slack. That's what St. Jim's for. That's what Stacy's for. That's what Nick's coming up. That's why we've got the communications team lead position. So you can pick that up and run with the ball. We can simulate actions, actual emergencies. We can do that in a lot of different ways. I will tell you that we will be playing with the county in the next 12 to 16 months. We're rewriting the county emergency operations plan. It's going to be one. Then it's going out and everybody's going to get a tabletop on this. And then next year we're running a full-blown drill. Okay? It's going to be at the airport. More like it's going to be a plane crash or something else. But we're going to get to play. All right. <clears throat> And it might be, and it's real time. It's going to be a real time, as it would happen, drill. So what might happen? What do you think our role might be? Communications. Communications. I'm going to say, no. you go to Baptist, you go to Wake, you go over to the Clemens, you go here to, over to Moses Cone, you go wherever, and you're coordinating back with me. How many people are they getting? What's their capacity? Where are they at right now? 
Real time drill. Hmm? But we have to do one when we rewrite the plan. We're required to do one every three years anyway. So this just happens to be a good time to do it. Plus we got a one point eight million dollar grant to do it, so might as well make it happen and make it happen good. <laughs> now, if you were going to do a training over the radio like that, you would probably have to broadcast a message that this is a training exercise or something. Every, every so message people would, don't go crazy. Every message would be predicated with this is a drill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't every want, message is predicated now. We don't want War of the Worlds to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. We don't want War of the Worlds to happen. Well, it has happened. People have done that. They've run drills and not done that. And all of a sudden, people are going to the airport because they want to take pictures of plane crashes. <laughs> <What's your laughs> <goal? laughs> yeah. All right. Every Thursday night, we talk about something. Who was on the net Thursday night? This past Thursday night. What did we talk about? Heat. 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 We walked through heat emergencies. Yeah. How many people are very well versed in handling the heat emergency or even recognize it? Just a few of us. Of course, those that paid attention on that last <coughs> night or Thursday night now know. But most people aren't. The training we do is usually relevant to the time of year, especially if it's a weather related training. But we do a whole lot of other trainings. We do the message training. When I talked about the general message form, the ICS 213, we spent four weeks, actually three weeks, because the fourth week was when we did the message. So we spent three weeks talking about the 213 on the net. We talked about it, how, to, how to do it, how to use it, what to do. And then that's when we sent the message out, the fourth week. We did that in December. We sent the message out in January. We do a lot of training on those, on those nights. I know that's past some people's bedtime, Bob. Thursday is the day that I have to work late every week, and you're right in the middle of my busiest day of the week. Mm -hmm. I did okay. listen to Thursday. I did not pick that date. I inherited I that date. But I was listening. Not attentively, but I was listening. Believe it or not, it's very difficult to change that date, mm -hmm. and I understand why they did it, why they put that date there. Don't, don't change it. Um, Good night. The only thing I've been thinking about is extending it. I can't go earlier because we <laughs> end up interfering with our wonderful friends with the Baptist Men's Ministries. Their net is 8 o'clock on HF, and we want them to participate because, because we have several folks here that are part of that group. Um, so we kind of keep it there. Only a couple of us have to interface with the NTS system, and they run a net every night. Yeah. So missing one night doesn't mean it. But um, we can always get to them. <coughs> so Thursday night kind of works. All right, tabletop exercises. We all sit around a table and talk. Troubleshoot. We throw in jacks. We do different things. What do you do? We're going to try to plan one, and it's probably not going to happen this year. It'll probably be first of next year. And the reason is that my schedule is pretty tied up starting next month. <clears throat> I try to do a drill once a quarter with everybody, natural drills, what my goal is, and or training really don't want to do something every month with you on a day because I don't, I don't want to take a lot of your time. But we do need to practice this stuff. We do need to get this training in. And we need to keep it up. Okay. So far this year, and it's what? The end of May? So far this year I have had... I'm going to start counting all my times. I've had 37 days of training. And it's only in the Some of it's repetitive. But it's skills that are perishable. It's stuff we've got to continue to do. We've got to continue learning. 
All right. Real world experience toward the Tanglewood. Learn and practice. Pay close, close attention. Listen to the nets. Listen to how the rhythm is. Listen to the tempo that we do and how we talk. Like I said, emergencies are not times to start learning. Okay. Now, if there's no other option, there's what's called just in time training. Okay? And that's going to be just enough to get you by. Here, here's this Viper radio. You turn it on this way. This is the channel selection. You push here to talk. Here, I'll send your call signs 1210. Okay? You just got just in time trained on how to work a handheld radio. <clears throat> and that's about how it's going to happen. It's going to be real quick. Oh, do you have any questions? As soon as you go, huh? Oh, you're good. Thank you. No. No. We'll answer some questions. But it's literally, you're going to be on the fly in some of that. So having a poorly or inexperienced NCS will do a lot of harm. I can't stress training enough. Whoops. Not even sure what that was. That was that update thing. Was it updating? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Pre check in checklist. Do we have a checklist for everything we do? We should. I don't really have one developed for the NCS because it's up to you. It depends on where you're at. If you're at the EOC, it's one thing. If you're doing it from here, it's another. If you're doing it from a remote location, it might be something different. But there are some key things that come into play. The right forms. We do have that listed out. You know, so you ask the questions. Can you hear everybody? I look at Mark and I go, Mark, I want you to run the net. You're on simplex. You're on 146.520. Can you hear everybody in the county? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I doubt that I could. I got a tower 50 feet in the air. I might. Probably not. Okay. Do you have the right? For the best performing antenna for the conditions. I'm going to run that control off that handheld. Is that probably the best antenna to use? No. no. But if I hook that onto some coax that's hooked onto a J pole that's up in the tree, that's have I just increased my, my capabilities? Sure. That much better. Okay. Normally, right now, our plans are call for our, our net control to be either at an EOC or a forward command post. And the only time it would be at the command post would be if the actual operation is going from the command post. Um, our alternate EOC is here. If we can't man this, then I may pick a station somewhere that's reasonable. If you run with a handheld, you got enough battery packs? You got all you need? <coughs> Last thing you want to do if you're operating the net controller is run out of battery power. <coughs> Using a headset or a noise canceling microphone or just a noise canceling microphone. If I'm using the standard dynamic microphones that a lot of these radios come out. And I'm here and we've got all this, we got people talking, all the noise going on. What's going over my radio? All the background. All the background. Noise, noise canceling mic will do what? Knocks all that out. Think about doing that. Do you have enough pens and pencils and paper? I walk in, I go, okay, I'm ready for that control. I got one pen for four sheets of paper. I'm good. You guess going to last 12 hours? No. Mm -hmm. This will probably be done in about 20 minutes. Okay. 
make sure you got paid for your pens. What invariably is going to happen when you set your pen down? We'll come up MIA real quick. Okay. I've had people in the EOC, I've taken my pen, I've slipped it in my side pocket. I've been leaning over the desk talking to somebody, my pocket gets lifted. The pen's getting taken. I just need this for a minute. I have no clue who it is, and I never get it back. I run through, and I probably lost four pens Wednesday. That way. A lot of guys walk around with them in their pockets and their hands. Okay. Take a pencil. They won't steal a pencil. I they won't steal a pencil. No. <laughs> I had a college professor though that told me that if pencils are people. There. Pencils are for people prone to error. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. All right. VHF operations. Who knows all of our repeaters in the area? How many repeaters do we have? Depends on how big you define area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't count the Forsyth County. Oh. I'll make it easy. No, let's see. Bonds over here count. Well, the ones that we have agreements with for exclusive use are five. We have two from K4GW, and we have three from W4NC. Two UHF, three VHF that we have exclusive use of. We can take control of any or all of them. If we need for any agreements. It gives us that authority. Are there other repeaters if we had to that we could also probably tap? Sure. There are. There are others. We have another one that will probably come available to us when we see the testing phase. And all which will give us six. It'll be another VHF. I think it's VHF. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's. So that one will be coming up, and it's a fusion. We ever considered using uh, DMR? It covers the state pretty broad, especially down there. Yes and no. Um, DMR is one. I do have a DMR radio. Uh, the problem with DMR is that it's internet based. Yeah. That's what all the interfaces are. So as far as trying to actually use that as a primary plan, um, it, it's pretty much the low priority because it is internet based. It doesn't take much in Forsyth County for us to lose internet in a lot of the areas of the county. Guess what happens to your DMR when that happens? If you've got to go through that round. It slows down, all kinds of stuff. And you know that type of network and what it does. Um, I mean, don't knock, I don't knock DMR. It's a good decent radio. Takes a little bit of getting used to and, and learning how to set it up and what to do with it, but it's not bad. Okay. How about a designated relief operator? What's the first thing you want to know when you go into the mission? How long do I have to be here? How long am I going to be here? Well, I don't know yet. We're still we're still setting up. Plan on twelve hours. Might be less. Okay. Always plan on that 12 hours. Might be less. But you at some point want to know, when's my relief getting here? Who's going to relieve me so I can go get rest? You also want to know, where do I need to go to? That's always helpful. Mary, I need you to deploy to a shelter. She goes, okay. Well, is that shelter number three at Tanglewood, or number two, or the one at Poppy Park, or does that mean a Red Cross shelter somewhere? These kind of be specific, don't they? And I need you to go here. This is where it is. This is the address. This is who you report to. This is how long you're going to be there. Okay. 
all those things. All right, open and close the net on schedule or as the situation dictates. Manage the traffic flow. Keep it going. Don't let things back up. Years, several years ago, we walked into an operation. An amateur radio was involved in this, and this was an exercise. And it was a large scale search and rescue operation that they were practicing. And I walked in, and we had Civil Air Patrol, amateur radio, public safety. And I looked over at the formal messages that were being worked on. And I kid you not, they both of these over here, Civil Air Patrol with Amateur Radio, probably had a stack of messages and stuff. They were evaluating this. And I'm looking through, I said, Can I see your message? And I'm flipping through. And some of these messages were a couple hours old. And it's like, has this been transmitted? No, we haven't had an opportunity yet. But I had sat there before I even asked the question and watched both operators. And they were sitting there munching and snacking during the call. No communications anyway. And often they get handed another message and it just goes to the bottom of the stack. It's like, are you ever going to transmit these? Get these out? <clears throat> Tyler, get them going. That's your job as a net controller. Just get it out the door. If you hold a message for more than 10 minutes, you've held it 15 minutes too long. Okay? You want to get it out the door. Standard script. We have one for pretty much everything. There's not too much that we have to ad lib. Stick to the script. It'll keep you on schedule. It'll keep things going good. Some of our scripts, when we're operating a long period operational net, they're different from what you hear on Thursday night. They're a lot shorter. And about every 30 minutes, you have something you have to say, unless you're in the middle of the trap. And it's pretty simple. This is WS4FC operating emergency operations at Forsyth County, North Carolina. All stations, this is a directed net. You should contact net control. WS4FC out. It comes out about every 15, 30 minutes. What do you do that for? Keeps the airways open and keeps people informed. It's a directed net. Somebody might be monitoring and also they realize something's going on. That's two things. One, let's know the frequency is controlled. Two, hey, I want to play. I got time. I want to help out. You just gained another volunteer, right? It's a good way of recruiting. All right. Also, make sure you thank people. Like I said, when you're checking in, Jim checks in. This is KB4SJ. You know, and he gives me all this good stuff. And I don't go. Thank you very much. We're pleased to recognize you, etc. But at the end, what do I say? Hey, thanks, guys, for participating. Thanks for checking in. That's when we do it, not at the beginning. We don't take up that time on that. Message preferences. We're going to go through the precedents again real quick. It keeps things on track. It keeps information overload from occurring. It keeps you in a better um, frame of operations. Which one's more important, the bedpans for the shelter or the ambulances needed for the train wreck? All depends on how bad you need that bedpan. Depends on where you are. Depends on where you are and who you are. Okay. I will suggest to you that this is probably the more pressing need because this deals with life safety. This deals with life comfort and lack of embarrassment. Okay. Nobody's going to die from a lack of a bedpan. They're going to die from that lack of an EMS team at that train wreck. So again, it's prioritizing. It's looking at these things realistically. Emergency. Immediate protection, life or property. Somebody's going to die. 
operational media. If we don't handle this soon, somebody could die. We gotta handle this now or this could happen. Priority. We need to handle this as quick as we can. Health and welfare, condition of people. Okay. Mary Jane's okay. She's in this shelter. She'll talk to you next week. Routine. Unrelated to any emergency, I like this. Birthday greetings, that activity reports, all that stuff. That's routine. This is where your shelters, your shelter requests, your butt bed pans, all that stuff goes. Okay. The national transportation or national uh, traffic system does not use operational need. That is not within the AWRO system. That is a North Carolina precedence. That's used in the county, that's used throughout North Carolina. So the you need water in a couple of days. Routine. routine. Priority. Um, we haven't gotten our shipment of water and it's we're running out now. tomorrow. Immediate is, it's 90 degrees and we have no water, or we have water for two hours. I mean, how, how do you, priority versus immediate? Can you give me a definition or a, an example? Well, think of it this way. Operational immediate is if we don't handle this now, dire consequences will occur. So it's 100 degrees. I got 10 workers that are supposed to be clear at my, they're putting up a shelter. It's 100 degrees and we have no water. That would probably be the okay. Tomorrow morning we're setting up priority or not? Probably routine. Okay. It's still in a it's still in a ramp up phase. <laughs> well. And that yeah. should be coming anyway as part of the shelter center. Uh, should be. Yeah. Because you know like I do, that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's and some of that might even just be tactical. Okay. Hey, we're setting the shelter up. We haven't received our water yet. Okay, let me check. It's in round. You'll have it in hour. Okay, that's a tactical operation as opposed to an actual formal message. We may not formally write those out. Okay. Remember, operational, immediate, priority, health and welfare, routine track messages are formal written messages. Okay. Some stuff may not be have to be written out. Okay. It's a formal. That's a formal request. Some of them are just tactical. Thank you. Okay. I need a pumper at this intersection. Okay, that's a tactical response. That's not, I have to write this out. Message here, precedence, da 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 da. I need a pumper at this intersection. No, I just need a pumper and send it. We still log that. We still log it. Yes. Okay. But it's not a formal message, it's a tactical message. Okay. Believe it or not, some operations, now we don't do that here, but depending on the scope and the scale, we possibly could. But some locations actually set up nets that are main traffic, operational, immediate, emergency, and priority traffic are on this net, health and welfare is on this net, routine and formal on this net. <laughs> and if you had heaven help you, if you come on to their emergency priority net, saying, I need 50 bedpans, <laughs> they will jump your stuff, okay? They'll just refuse to handle that track. They won't even accept it. I don't think that's good, but there are operations that do that, so be aware that if you ever deploy somewhere outside of here, that may occur. Right. Ask for check-ins periodically throughout your net as net controller does a couple of things. It keeps the net running. It keeps people listening, knowing that you're still using the frequency, which prevents what? The two buddies that get on at 2.30 every afternoon and want to rag you for three hours. It prevents that. Secondly, it may get you some additional recruits. They want to have time and want to come help out. Okay. Always ask, and you'll see this in our scripts. Check-ins with traffic or messages. When we're in emergency operations, that's the first person we're going to ask for. 
and stations holding traffic for the net only. First check in. Then after that, it's going to go as it would normally go. You know, which is how by call sign by the first letter of the suffix of your call sign. And we do that because if I say, anybody want to check in? Every one of you is going to key the mic at the same time. <laughs> uh, okay. And all we're going to hear is. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm kind of left with a question in my mind here. All right. So, we have the com lead, and we have two operators. And the traffic had to do with when is water going to get to my station. Mm -hmm. So, I take that message as the net control, and I have to do what to find out the answer to that question? And while I'm finding out the answer to that question, all other traffic has to hold? Not necessarily. You accept the message, you say, Roger, thank you, we'll get back with you. Okay. okay. You may tell them to wait, in which if you say wait, you say wait one, wait Okay, let me talk real quick. Proverbs, wait. Right. That means hang on a second, I'll be back to you. That's 10 to 15 seconds, and I'm going to be back to you. If I say wait out, let me just hang tight, I'll get back to you as soon as I can with the answer. And that might be a few minutes. Okay? Those that's wait and wait out. So that is a something you got to think about. If you think it's going to take longer than a couple of minutes, acknowledge their message. Roger, we'll get back to you as soon as we have an answer. Let them clear, let you clear. You're turning around as the radio operator and handing that message to the team. Right? Okay. Economy. That's not that's no longer your concern now. Okay. You so just pass that off and do whatever you they just do pass that to the communications there. lead. That comm lead is going to turn around, they're going to go into Web EOC. In the EOC situation, now you're going to type a message over to logistics. Hey, shelter three has zero water. Okay, it gets transmitted. It flashes on logistics screen. Logistics looks at that. Hey, whoa, warehouse, we need water here. We need it now. They come back. They get the message saying water's in route. ETA 20 minutes. It's passed back to our communications lead. Flashes on their computer. They look at it, they go, hey, Ken, call Shelter 3, tell them water to be route 20 minutes. Okay. Okay, then you call them back. And that's how that would work. That's how that flow would go. All right. Sometimes we may ask for check-ins for traffic only. But we don't want to talk to people who've got messages. If you got nothing else, we don't want to hear from you. Just traffic. Some people, and there are people out there, they are net checker enters. <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah. They hear a net, hey, I just want to check in. Say hi. Check in and out. Yeah. Don't know what your net's about, we just want to check in and say hi. Okay, thank you. Okay. Just thank them, move on. See, that's going to happen. Always think about what's going on. Read back calls as they're received. Try not to let yourself get overloaded. If you open up check-ins, when you get to about five or six stations, just come in and say, this is Net Control, WS4FC, Roger. List those six stations. Stop. Okay. I know if you listen to the rag shoot, you'll hear people, we're going to put a bookmark in it right here. No, we don't want to do that. Come in, Roger. Boom. Because once you start talking, nobody else is going to talk. And then you'll continue checking this. <coughs> if you don't understand the station's call sign, you get six stations checked in, but you only really copied five of them down, you missed part of the last one, or one in the middle. Read off the ones you got complete. And then call for check-ins again. They don't hear their call sign being repeated, they're going to check back in. It's 
pretty soon. If you're on HF, it's a little different because HF gets kind of weird. You can miss call signs easy. You might get part of it and they die out. And they may not even realize that they weren't acknowledged. So usually on HF, what we do is as soon as they try to check in, the net controller will immediately come back. Unknown station. Say your call sign three times. And they'll repeat their call sign phonetically three times. That usually gives them that control enough to get it. Don't usually have to do that on two meters or uh, 70 centimeter, especially on repeater, but you could on seven months. Okay. Listen, check you. Pair up your stations. Be concise, take breaks, control the tone of your voice, and identify yourself legally. Remember, we still got to do it. Ten minutes after every transmission. A lot of people go every transmission, so I'm talking, and I finish up, I have to say, well, hey, you know, it's a beautiful day out there, what do you think, W1HRC? He comes back and says, yeah, it's a pretty blue day. I go, yeah, you know, how, how's the family doing, W1HRC? <laughs> Some people actually think you got to do it that way. Um, we've talked to a couple of people like that that <coughs> drive you crazy. But anyway, make sure you follow the rules. Do what? So if you're that control, mm -hmm. you're calling the area. You go through and you do all of the check -ins. Turn it over to the DC who's going to get the train. Should you, you know, uh, identify as WS4FC, KB4SJ, out, turn it over? Or no, because you're operating under, you're under, you're under, you're under uh, it's not a tactical call sign. No, but you're operating under. The Oxcom call side during that net, not yours. Okay. Gotcha. That's the thing. Just like when you're here, you, if you're operating here, you'd be operating like field day, you're operating on the club call side. So it's not a tactical call. All right. This is what we expect from uh, our net members. Pretty simple stuff, right? Answer when called by net control. Nothing's more frustrating for our net control operators than to be sitting there calling somebody they need to talk to 10 and 12 times. And then they just give up and they, hey, can you? They call somebody else. So this has happened at Tanglewood. Call one of our SAG operators. Hey, can you? or you know, talk to Rest Stop 2, or better still was the one where we called Rest Stop 2 and said, hey, is SAG 3 around, is somewhere? Yeah, he's standing right beside me. But yet, we just called for SAG 3 for 10 times and they're standing next to each other. <laughs> What's that make you want to do as a net controller? <laughs> Lose it. Right. Makes you want to scream, number one. Number two, it makes you want to take a Herald Special and wrap it around her head. Okay? It's frustrating. Listen to the radio and answer that control. And the same thing for that control. It's frustrating for the people in the field who call that control three, four, five times and don't get an answer. Answer the radio promptly. Even if it's to acknowledge their station and tell them to wait. Okay, before SJ, Roger, wait out. I've acknowledged him. He now knows that I'm hearing him. And he's just going to wait for me to finally get to where I can talk to him. Because I'm in that control, I might be doing something. You know, leaving my fingernails. You know. <laughs> Might have something going on. Somebody may be talking to me.
keep in mind you're working with volunteers. Everybody out there is a volunteer. You're a volunteer, they're a volunteer. Everybody's a volunteer. Okay, even though we're not the Tennessee state, which is a volunteer state, we're still on volunteers. You gotta treat them with respect. You gotta work. Understand that. We can't order compliance, we can only ask for cooperation. I do have the authority, my staff has the authority to not demand compliance, but we do have a way of getting compliance, and that is asking you to go to the door because you become a detriment to the operation. We can fire you. That's the only way we can get compliance. Or by threat. No. Um, <laughs> reality is, in all the years I've been doing this type of stuff, working with volunteer organizations, I don't even think I've fired a handful of people. Literally. Most people that are volunteers that come out have a good heart and a desire to volunteer and do it right. And they want to do it right, especially if they're trained. <coughs> <coughs> if we can enlist cooperation, that's the best way to do it. <coughs> Never criticize only error. What happens when you do that? You embarrass everybody. Well, one, you embarrass the person, and all that does is torques them off. Number two, it just shows you're a poor leader. I will never walk up, and as much as Mark irritates me, I will never walk up and yell and scream at him in front of all of them. I'm going to pull him off to the side and beat him over the trash can. <laughs> okay? And we're going to do it in private. We don't irritate him. It's just like bad culture. I know. It's just culture. But it's the thing of this is what, this is how a leader operates, you should operate. You as a net controller or a cop team lead, that's how you need to operate. Lead by example. Okay? I will not ask somebody to go on top of SMAP 1, which is a 53 foot tractor trailer lead, to put the antennas on the roof, unless I'm willing to climb up that silly thing myself. Because that's a steep ladder, you got to watch where you're walking on top of that thing, because if you hit the wrong spot, you're going to wind up in the trailer. Hmm. And you'll do it really fast, and they will not like you for long. And okay. that you do it, the most expensive thing. You want know, the roof? <laughs> you no, know, when you go through it? Yeah. Whatever's underneath you, it's the most expensive. No, actually, I think the roof is. Because <laughs> <laughs> underneath where all that is, is pretty much open space. So, anyway. Resolve your problems on the telephone, and resolve them either in person or as soon as possible afterwards. That doesn't mean days. It means as quick as you can after everything calms down. The microphone techniques, we've talked about those. Just remember, practice with your microphones. Know what you're doing. Noise canceling microphones are the best. I've only got one radio now that doesn't have one, and I'm <clears throat> trying to decide where I'm going to put one. I may or may. Unidirectional microphones are not the best, but you usually want to speak on axis for the best performance. <clears throat> Omnidirectional, just what it says, it's going to pick up everything around it. <clears throat> It'll pick up everything in the world. You're going to pick up that kid if you're out. At a rest stop, they're going to pick up that kid on the other side of the parking lot. He's yelling and screaming. All right, how about this? S, M, <coughs> sounds. Make pops, right? You ever heard somebody on the radio and you hear this when they're speaking? You hear the popping sounds and the slur sounds? You know, just the way they are with the microphone. <coughs> they back off the mic. If they change the angle of the mic, it will change all that. Speaking across the mic, we've talked about it. A phone screen sometimes will knock some of that down, especially wind noise. You know, you can make phone screens for your little handheld microphones that they have. Go up here. Some of those I've actually had to put a phone 
slip over them, and it knocks that wind noise that goes across. <laughs> Light gain, compression. Learn to adjust them. If you're operating on HF, if you don't already know this, a lot of radios have a monitor capability. It allows you to listen to yourself through your headset. It's a great way to adjust your mic because you can tell what you're doing. Because you're going to hear exactly what everybody else hears. All right. Remember speech compression, use it with single sideband, not if you're on FM voice. It tends to screw things up a little bit. Maybe so, uh, deviation. Yeah. On, uh, I don't remember which would be here specifically, but the, the 725 star functionality with, uh, with the codes, so you can hit. I had to repeat the pair back, which we said. I had to do that a few times. Four seven. Four seven. Okay. Anybody done that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. Very helpful. <laughs> it's a code you can punch into the repeater. It's star seven two five, and you have to punch it in quickly. Key the mic. Okay. When it says start test now, it means right now. Right now. When you press that in, it's going to come back and say that. And you have to key the mic right then. I have it says now, star. key the mic. Hmm? I have 725 star. Yeah. <coughs> it might be 725 star. Yeah. But it's going to come back and it will say start recording now. When it says now, key the mic. Because if you go, huh? You got to do it again. You key the mic, say your call sign, test, release, and it will come back in a second. It will report, report back to you exactly what you have sent. And it is a good test. All right, think about this. Believe it or not, you will actually speak louder in your vehicle. The faster you're driving, the louder you talk. It's that perception of noise. As the noise level goes up, I gotta talk louder. The problem is when you're on the radio, what's that doing? Distortion, over deviation. It messes up your communications. <clears throat> we already talked about the monitor thing. Find the technique that works for your radio, whatever works best for it, and stick with it. Getting close. Specialized nets, we're going to bounce through these pretty quick. These are some of the served agencies again American Red Cross, Salvation Army, National Weather Service, et cetera. We may have a specialized net just for them. And we're only going to deal with their issues, with their traffic, with whatever that's going on, based on what they need to fix. Emergency Operations Center. Again, these are served agencies. We're going to do what they want us to do. They're our clients. We're going to function as we need to function. We use any number of things. Simplex, repeaters. Nothing tells us exactly what we've got to use. One neat thing about the Red Cross is we may be asked by the Red Cross to provide communications from where? The shelters to the chapter. Where's the chapter headquarters? Right here. Right here. But then this chapter might have to speak to the next Marion. chapter. And we might have to worry about communications between chapters as well. <clears throat> okay? So what are we setting up when we start doing this? Hmm? A network. A network. Communications that way. <clears throat> the same thing can occur with the EOCs. Okay. Remember, our traffic's not necessarily secure. So if it's sensitive information, it's got to stay on secure circuits. What we say can and will be used against us by every media outlet out there. 
Anyway, if it's secure, we have ways of doing that. Um, amateur radio, by and large, is not necessarily secure. Windlink is probably the most secure that we have in some digital modes, <coughs> but they are still interceptable. If we have something that absolutely has to be set secure, it's either going to be done by fax, telephone, email, or Mars radio. As Mike was discussing with me earlier, he got he got an encrypted message. He's got a problem trying to decrypt it. I've got to walk him through how to do that. So I haven't done that yet. He needs to learn that aspect. But we have specific software that allows us to encrypt a message. And if you've never seen it, seen an encrypted message, if you were to intercept one of our messages that's encrypted, all you're going to see is lines and lines and lines of numbers and letters. Funny just <laughs> random, huh? Funny little yep. Just random letters and numbers and all that junk. And it really looks weird. And they're in patterns. I think they're eight. Eight long. You might see 16 or 17 or 18 lines. Or, but when we decrypt it, it will decrypt to we need 50 bed pans of the shelter. National traffic system uses the ARRL4. Everything we do here in the state is on the ICS-213. And that includes health and welfare unless it's interfacing with the national traffic system. Anything that interfaces with them goes on the ARRL4. Everything else is in the 213. Pretty simple. The reason I ask that is it's pretty simple because some people get that confused. They want to use just one form. All right. Become accustomed to working these forms. We serve with the pleasure of our groups. Point of distribution, what's that mean? So, it's where stuff is distributed. Okay? It could even be where people come to get a mass inoculation in a pandemic. And we may put you there to communicate. Why? Because we need to know. How many shots have you given? How many shots do you got left? Not meaning how many people are standing in line, but what's your stock? How many are left? We've given out 20,000, we've got 3,000 left. Okay, well, we're still sending about 9,000 more people to them, so we've got to get you at least 6,000 more shots. Right? That's how we know. I know we're working long. We're trying to get there. We're getting close. We never work alone. We always have additional support. Everybody's got a lot of things working. Believe it or not, Red Cross has amateurs within their system. Saturn has amateurs within their system. that work strictly for them. Our friends with, with Baptist Men's, they have their own amateur communications group. Okay? And we could be asked. It's theoretically possible. We could be in a major disaster right here in Forsyth County or in the region, and we have all three of these coming in. How are we going to interface with them? I can tell you, I got five, I've got five repeaters. If I've got a major disaster, I'm probably going to be using pretty much all of them. <clears throat> Do you think I'm going to walk in and go, okay, here, Red Cross, your group use this repeater, and Saturn use this, and Baptist Media use this, and give up three of my repeaters? And limit my operation down? No. I'm going to integrate them. I'm going to bring them in and assign them. Well, I want you on this group. I want you over here. I want you over here. We're going to integrate them. We're going to work together. Okay? Or I can be really cool and go what? Go, okay, here's this repeater I'm releasing. All three of you get on out and have fun. I wouldn't do that to them. That's getting really cool. Uh, I'll release people in order to advance that one. Because they work throughout the country and the nation, right. throughout the state. Well, they know that if they need a repeater, they can quite possibly they can be pulled in. But, but mm -hmm. It's all part, it's all, we got an MOU here. We got an MOU here. And I think AWR has an MOU here. Okay. They may, I think they just got 
They, I know they were talking about it and working on it, so they may already have one. The reality is, it's just like if I take a team from here, if I take you guys from here, and we go to the coast, okay, I'm going to have to ask which repeater you guys want. So are we going to integrate within your system? How are we going to operate? I just can't come in and take over their repeaters. Whoever's in charge is in charge of those systems. Okay. Reality is, we're going to give them something to work on, or, you know, because these two missions, for example, these two are pretty identical. They're both primarily working shelters. And actually, from my experience, deploying would often work side by side. Okay. This group here, well, they help with shelters, but they're also doing what? Ooh. These are feeding folks. We want to keep them happy. Yeah, I keep them happy. Okay. But they're feeding, they're working with the shelters, but who are they also primarily feeding? Responders. The responders. Do we want to keep these guys and gals happy? Yeah. You can't go on right we do. We want some good food. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to work with them. We're going to keep them happy. We're going to give them something. That, you know, we're going to give them some frequencies. We're going to make it make it work together. Okay. So we're going to determine what the nets are, and that's just the way it works. It's just the way things are structured. They're still going to report in through the, their communications people. They're reporting in the comm through the Oxcom manager. That's where amateur radio locks. We're going to bounce through weather nets real fast. We're not going to spend a lot of time. 147.255 is, according to the Skyward website, that's their primary. I think that repeater is still down. I think right now they're running everything on the 25 repeater. 255 is relocated, and it's at a low height, so it's hard to hit. Yeah. So they're primarily, last time I heard them when we had the last bout of severe weather, they were on 250. Um, so those are their primary for the Piedmont uh, area skyline. Or was it called Triad area skyline? Of course, that county weather net, we operate very similar to the Skyward system. We do the same thing, but we do it for Forsyth County. We also include Davie and Davidson County and Yadkin County, yeah. along with Stokes. And why do we include, especially, Davie and Yadkin County? Where does our weather come from? Yes. Those sides. They happen to be in two different geographical areas for the National Weather Service. One's Blackbirds. One's out of uh, South Carolina. So for us, we're the first group of the Raleigh weather area that gets hit with the weather. Us including them in our weather net gives us what? Yeah. A pretty good heads up and idea of what's coming our way. Okay. That gives Raleigh a little more early warning. So it puts us good. You back up I can always back it up, doesn't mean I want to. <laughs> Cutting into my time, I got a girl that's got to go to a wedding, and I got a girlfriend going into it. I'm just messing with you. We can stay as long as we need, but I know that Mary needs to rock here shortly. And I want to get, we're almost done. If you want to go to Tangle with the day, you better go right now. <laughs> All right, we want to leave All right. Okay. Remember, you know what to report. You went through the training. I'm not going to belabor all this. Send in what they want. If you got the handout, that's what they gave it for us. I'll make sure we have that. There are some pocket cards you can get as well that have that same information. Okay. Certainly, if you see a tornado, funnel cloud, wall cloud, doesn't matter. Tell somebody. Strong winds over 50 miles an hour. And that's not looking at your window and going, well, let's see, my flag's pretty well straight out, so I guess we got about 50 miles an hour. No, that's I got a weather station, and that thing's about spun off <laughs> because the wind's that high. That's what you want, that accurate wind. Okay. They want measured stuff. They, they want measured stuff, not guesstimates. Right, but like these little accurate weather, like they might own people and stuff like that. 
You can spend anywhere from two hundred bucks to two thousand dollars, depending on how much you want to spend on the weather station. Well, you can spend one hundred fifty nine dollars like the one I got. It gives you what you need. It gives you what you need. Okay. Snow accumulation two inches or more. I know we were busy on uh, in December, weren't we? Fourteen inches in twelve hours. That was pretty intense. Is that a school for a week? All right, again, what you see, tell them what you got going on and tell them where it is, okay? The key thing is the direction. You tell them where it is, closest intersection. Don't tell them, well, I'm here and I can see this about, about a mile off. Where the hell is a mile off from this intersection? in what direction. I'm here, I'm looking north, I can see this, I'm not sure of the distance. Still gives them information, but it's more accurate than, well, it's about a mile off. Because what looks to be my, maybe a mile off atmospherically can be 15 or 20 miles. Okay. You don't know how big that funnel cloud is. It might, it might be a teeny tiny one that's close to you that looks this wide and it's a mile from you or it might be one this wide that's 15 miles out and looks tiny. Can you give them the GPS coordinates? That come up you got GPS you? coordinates? You can give them that. They really love GPS. <laughs> and actually a comment they want the <coughs> what you gotta give it latitude and longitude that's not minutes and seconds. Right. That'll be digital. All right, message handling. We talked a lot about that today. Real quick scenario 330 hurricane evacuees in the Red Cross shelter. We're providing communication support. We're getting 12 hour shifts. Elderly woman is brought in at 2 o'clock, 1400 hours. Requires her next dose of insulin at 2300. So the manager walks through the room. I need to make sure we get insulin for this woman. She needs it by 2300. Now, the operator doesn't write it down, doesn't log it. He goes, okay. And he calls to the EOC and says, hey, we need insulin here by 2300. Does he pass the message? No. Oh, yeah. Correctly. He did. He passed the message. We need insulin at the shelter by 2300. Okay. Message has been passed. And you'll see guys say, okay, we got it. However, at 8.30, the shelter manager comes back because the medication's still not there and he's getting worried. Then I come up to the relief operator, hey, you requested insulin for this woman. She needs about 2,300. Where is it? What's he do? He flips through his log. I don't show where he ever made the request. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not on paper. But I'll call it in. So he calls it in. Unfortunately, that control hour, the operator at TFC didn't bother to write it down either. Oh, no. Okay? Nice. <coughs> but then somebody finds a scrap of paper on the EOC. Yeah, we do have it over here. A little sticky note. <coughs> and, and we find out that, in fact, it is in route, but nobody ever came back and said, yeah, it's in route to be here at this time. Now, had this been put on a formal message, because what when you say somebody needs insulin, is that pretty high priority? Yeah. Yes. 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 <clears throat> because that's a life threat. So we want to make sure we track that pretty down darn good. That's a whole lot different than we need water. Okay, whole different priority list in there. Water can be tactical. I'm still going to log that. Somebody tells me I got a person who needs insulin, needs medication, or specific medication, you can be damn sure that's going on a formal request. Because then it's tracked. It's tracked even better because it's a formal message. But we don't try to track 
who it's for. That's not our yeah. not our concern. And if somebody else comes in fifteen minutes later with another request, then another form of request. And hopefully they're keeping track of it. Well, you probably should go this is an additional request, yeah. additional patient. I would confirm it's an additional to the one I just sent. Yeah. And that's why we try to work, and ICS works under single point of contact. The incident commander speaks to who? Well, he speaks to the logistics chief, the planning chief, the operation chief, soon the comm chief, okay, finance chief, etc. Who do they speak to? They're unit leaders, which right now in the system for logistics, the logistic chief speaks to the communications unit leader. Who does he or she speak to? Below them, the OXCOM team leader. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that incident commander coming to you. They go through the, the little single point of contact. That way you don't have 10 people trying to tell you something. That's what we try to operate them. Doesn't always happen, but it's a good way. Formal, informal messages, we talked about that. Formal's written, informal's not. Okay? If it's critical or important detail, put it formal. Okay? If it's something that requires an immediate action, hey, you got no water? We need water. Okay? That's tactical. Hey, we need a fire truck over here. We need an ambulance over here. That's tactical. That's immediate. We make it happen. We just talked about this. Okay. Remember, an emergency is what? An informal oral message. I need an ambulance here now. Here you go. It's taken care of. Written messages. I need the 50 bedpans. Okay. Speed and accuracy. We need to worry about those. We have the two systems that we use. That's what the radio. Oops, that's what the radiogram looks like. If you've never seen one. One reason we don't use that in the incident command system is one because they're not familiar with that form. Other agencies are. They don't use it. But two, it becomes restrictive. This is the message point. You got 25 words, that's it. That's all you got. Well, there's also shortcuts in, in this that you don't have. And that's yes, right? So there right. are certain phrases I can use a three letter code. Right. But the agency does not it. know those or have the right. <laughs> that information. Makes sense. Right. Okay. And they may have more than this that has those phrases. Because some of those phrases are pretty limited. Happy birthday. Congratulations on your certificate. Whatever. <laughs> okay. So that gives you what we would do with the national traffic system. Those messages and those shortcuts are primarily geared towards health and welfare. And that's why that's perfect for that. We interface with it for a health and welfare message going over the national traffic system. We use that, it goes, we get the response the same way. We can encode and decode those with a little ARRL61 or ARRL61. Okay, believe it or not, they're two different meanings. You can look them up. There's your 213 form and what it looks like. We got a whole lot more space to write, plus we're able to track and reply, and we get a signature. We get that person's signature that's originating the message. If you're the originator, you sign it. But if the agency's the originator, they're gonna somebody from them is going to sign that document, and you're going to have it. Who approves it? Hmm? Who approves it? Approves Usually the message will be approved by a section chief. Planning does, operations. Does just that, that range. Can it be sent without that? In some cases, depending on what it is. Um, if it's like an operational media, it can be sent without that. 
but it's normally going to pass. That message is first going to pass through somebody to get to us. Before we see it, it's going to pass through somebody. The Comel Logistics Chief is going to pass down the line. Even the WebEOC, before we see it, when they put it in, usually it will electronically sign it. I think that's the way it's supposed to do it. It's supposed to electronically sign it in the system before it gets to us. You, so whoever originates it. You and Owen. Unknown. No. I no, can't. He can't. He can't. Well, because if it's in, you, how this works in the EOC is our our team lead will be there with the web EOC up. Mm -hmm. Somebody in planning types out the message. The reason I ask that is, can can we originate one of these messages? We yes. Have to get them approved by someone above us. We can there originate are questions the message. about these yeah. forms. That's no, in this in this case, the approved by would be. The originator. Okay. So the fellow that. Who, whoever the seat, the com lead is. Okay. Or if you're in the shelter, you call it the thing. Right. I need insulin. Well, that's going to be coming from the shelter manager, and they're going to put it. You're going to have to get that put on and get that approved. Shelter. Okay. Okay. You get that approved by them. So, all right. So if the shelter you're working with the shelter manager instead of working with the com lead. Right. Because you may be in a shelter by yourself. Yeah, that's, that's okay. We're probably not going to put a three-man team in a shelter. Yeah. yeah. Forward command post, that control operation, EOC. Everywhere else is probably going to be a one or two person, person team. Um, yeah. Quick question. When you did the test a while back, and you sent a message out to everybody, you, you copied the message in the top part of the 213. Mm -hmm. All right. When when we send the message back, we put the weather station information in the reply. Yeah, they would put information into the reply. Okay, and then when we pass the traffic, do we include the entire message and reply, or just the reply? They would only you would only put back the reply. Okay, but you would reference the header. This would change. Okay, because the message, this is going to all stations from W1HRC, subject weather station. Here's my question. Now it's coming back from you. So now it's coming to W1HRC from your station, via subject weather station. Okay, so that'll change. This does, this is a reply. We are modifying the form. We haven't got it done yet at the WebDOC, but they're working on getting that coded for us. Um, we're going to have a block up here in this corner, and it will be message, message number. Yeah. So that we can yeah. track in my yeah. number. Until that happens, we we'll just stroke it on a piece of paper. When we stroke them out, we write it on a piece of paper. In the form, just put the message number in the corner. <clears throat> the Web EOC is already putting that number in. No, not yet. Oh, it's not there. It's not even there yet. We're working on. They're, they've got to go back through because they're having some other changes made. That's one of the changes we requested was add that in there. Okay. So we can track message numbers. Gotcha. And the idea is to have the system automatically generate those numbers <laughs> and you track them. That's going to be a little coding issue for their folks to marry them up. Because there's got to be a way of saying, especially if you're going to do a reply, this is a reply to message 123. You know, so it'll have to be like a check block. Is this a reply message? Check, yes. Message number 123 marries them up so that it shows up on the screen. It fills in everything. But that's the direction we're trying to go and it's it's a work in progress as they say don't speculate on anything remember people listen huh. incorrect information causes all kinds of serious problems for our served agencies panic ensues well we heard on amateur radio that you guys were doing this 
How come it hasn't happened yet? Hmm, doesn't go over well. We don't want to be a rumor source. Send text, me send, send your messages just as they're written. Okay, if, they'll, if they spell spell wrong, you spell it wrong. Okay? If you're a grammar Nazi, trust me, that message traffic is not for you. Okay? Some of these people write like third graders. Well, something that to you may seem like an error might be the critical dosage or something that yeah. medical people yeah, need. It could be uh, true. Could be. But remember, we're going to write it. We're going to read it just as it's written, spelling, grammar, punctuation, exactly as it is. We're not going to change a thing. It's true. If medical people might use a slight off thing on an abbreviation, and it might really make a difference in a prescription. Yes. That's true too. <laughs> it's critical to include a signature and title of the sender. We want to know who it came from. That way we can go back to him with the grammar Nazi and say, see, you spelled this wrong. <laughs> it's so we know who's accountable, who made this request, where did this come from. So we know who to respond back to, number one. But number two, if it's an outrageous request, we want the Evergreen 747 to put out this half acre brush fire. We need to bring it from California over here. Because our firefighters are too lazy to walk around with five gallon Indian tanks in their back and put out a half inch brush. Okay? We want to know what idiot requested that. That's why it's critical to get that signature and title. Okay? Because things like medevac helicopters and the Evergreen 747 are pricey. They cost a lot of money. they got to be justified. Log all incoming and outgoing messages. Log who's on duty. Who took the message. Who sent the message. If all I got is WS4NC and it was sent at 10 o'clock, but I don't have that Gaff was the operator, I don't know who to track down later on and say, did you really send this? Or better still, where's the copy? You said you sent message one, two, three at this time, but we can't find that message. Where is it? Keep them, even if you're in the field. What I do in all operations is I keep a duplicate copy. I will actually sit down and take time afterwards. After my shift, I'll take extra time to take the messages I handle and either copy them on a copy machine, which is usually available, and I copy them so I have a record. The officials stay there, the originals. But I've got a copy of what I did. That way, if somebody comes up and says, Harlan, we can't find this message, I've got a copy right here. This is okay. your, your cell phone is great for copying. Picture, 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 picture. Right? All right. Should informal messages be logged? Yeah. Up to that control station. Suggestion is, I would log any request for any type of service. Fire truck, ambulance, police car, water, Fort John. I'd go ahead and log those. If it's a request, I'd log it. If it's, hey, have a nice day, I'm going home now. I don't need to log that. I do need to log that he's been relieved. Yes. But I don't need to be logging in that, okay, I'm going to own that. All right, send out log all traffic. Alan? Uh, yes, quick question, sorry. I, I don't mean to be sarcastic, but do we have to bring a photocopier to the end? I like that control person that's passing traffic. How do we log that? We're handing it back. You're going to be handed a copy. Actually, you're not even going to have to worry about anything but what you do right there when you receive. Because all, the only time at a net control station. All right, let's look at this a couple of ways real quick because we're running quite tight. If I'm running net control out of here and the EOC is downtown, 
all you're doing is managing the net. Okay? You're not necessarily going to be handling the messages. You don't necessarily need to copy them down. You do need to log that WA4NOT sent W1HRC a priority and it was this number. You need to log that as a debt control station. Who sent the message? Who received the message? What was the message number? But you don't necessarily have to log the message because it wasn't addressed to your station. You don't have to write the message down there. But you do have to log what traffic was handled on the net. Does that make sense? Okay. As far as a fax machine, if you're at the USC, there's one there. What's going to happen if you're sitting at the net control station or at the radio station, depending on whether it's operating as net control or not, you're going to have two 13s there. Message comes in, you're going to scribble it out, you're going to hand it over to whoever the control, the, the communications lead is. They're going to take and type that into the system and then just set that aside. Yes, let me see that. Yeah. And then what they'll do when the reply comes back on WebEOC, they're going to pull that back over, they're going to write the reply out onto it, and they're going to hand it to you. That way you can retransmit back to the station their reply. Now we have a completed 213 here, we've got to complete it all electronically. We use a lot of trainees for long. Now here's something we're going to toss at you. You're in net control. You're downtown at the EOC. You're operating as net control. You're back in our little room. And they walk in with somebody who's got a nice green t-shirt on. It says CERT. Across it. Not S-E-R-T, but which is the state emergency response team. But C-E-R-T, community emergency response team. They go, hey, can you guys use this person? What's the answer? Yeah. Hell yeah! Have a seat. Guess what they can do? They can log. They can write. Show them what to do and let them log. Makes it simple. Now you've got your scribe. That takes one more thing off of you. So as part of your responsibility, though, wouldn't you be held responsible for whatever they mess up with? If they didn't record something properly or whatever. Yeah, but it's pretty simple. Once you teach them what to log, okay. okay, this is not rocket science, Ken. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, if, if you talk to them, easy. If you're talking Date, about time, them, who, and what? If you're talking about them copying a message, message you, may want, you may want to take a look at what they wrote, yeah. just logging. Logging is one thing. I would never use a search person to copy a message. And the reason is, you need to copy it because you need to be able to go right back to that person who's transmitted and go, repeat all after or repeat all before. You need to be able to immediately do that. And you don't have time to be sitting there going, I can't decipher your hand scratch. Mm -hmm. okay, you got to be able to decipher your own. However, they can be over there going at the clock, 11.15, on this date, message one, two, three came in from. They can track that. They can log that. That's pretty easy. Okay. All right, make sure they're legible because who has to read them? The next person that comes in. And those of us that will read, look at the event three weeks down the road. And have to reconstruct this thing for an after action. And there's nothing worse than trying to hold a piece of paper up going, what the hell are they trying to say here? It's hard. Okay. Good idea. Get the final approval and signature from the sending agency if they originate the message. It's really tough if they walk in and say, I need 50 bedpans, can you get that message out? You go, okay, sure. You write the message out, take it back and ask them to sign it. Make sure it's exactly the way they want it. 
because sure as hell, they're going to walk back in. I didn't say bed pants. I said 50 cots. Okay. Sometimes you may be given the authority to generate a message. Very rarely, but you might. Just remember, act within your authority. Okay. We're not secure. Messages sent by amateur radio should be treated as privileged information. Number one way to get out of this organization is walk to the press with a piece of information that you receive by amateur radio, out of the EOC, or anything else. Trust me, you will not be on another operation. What about your headlines and all together? Really hard to do anything with that uh, because you haven't violated an FCC rule. However, you might have other civil or criminal criminal possibilities that exist. Okay. Message relating to death of any specific person is never sent over the air. Okay, because the reports of my demise have been made in error. Hmm. All right, we already talked about informal messages. I like this. This is what we talked about earlier. The shelter manager says he needs 50 cots in blanks at Hartley High School. The message gets passed a couple of times, and all of a sudden, hey, they need a bunch more cots and blankets at the school on the hill. The problem is, it's in a hilly neighborhood, there's about half a dozen high schools on the hill. Okay? Make sure it's accurate. There's our precedence again. Alert mobilization. I do want to touch on this. We're going to be a little long. Our primary means is email and SS, SMS text. If I've got your cell phone number and I've got your email, when we do alerts, my system, I will put it in and it will transmit it to both. You'll get an email and you'll get a text message. And it will say an alert, Oxcom alert, and it will tell you some specific directions. Phone trees are inefficient and they delay people. If I'm initiating the phone tree, yeah, I might have two people to call. I might have to call Don and Jim. They're my top two. But I need them downtown, and they got to call three. The problem is, for everybody they can't get, they've got to call that next group. So if two of the three they're supposed to call don't answer, they've got to call the three that those two had each. So that's six more people they got to try to make a phone call to. What are we doing? Wasting time. We're delaying their response, and they're critical. I need them downtown. Secondary means is the repeater. There are four, a four alert mode statuses on the repeater, on the 4-7 repeater. There's four ways you can determine where our alert is. If we're in alert, the CW tone, the courtesy tone, if you listen to the repeater, when you unkey, there's a tone, right? There's a beep. If we are in alert status, it will do a double dot, and the CW at the end will be I. We're in alert. It means check your deployment bags, kind of get ready. Potential we could have something happen. If we go into an actual standby mode, meaning EOC, Emergency Management, has told us to stand by for possible deployment. That means pretty much they're expecting something to happen and us to go. We're going to stand by. Repeater will be changed. The tone will be a dash. The CW will be T. Is that a dash or an underline? A dash. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I just copied as it was said to me. Thank you very much. Okay? Yeah, that's why I asked. <laughs> I can only go with what is said. Okay? Well, and read the Morse. It's Morse. Okay? Yeah. I don't know. When you look at Morse, is it, it's dots are down here, dashes are up here, is it all on there's one no, There's no standard. It is a, if either one, if you've done the minus sign or the underline, they both translate as dash. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Now, double dash or an equal sign is different. It means different. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, activated. Means we're actually deployed, we're doing stuff. The courtesy tone's gonna be three dots, S. That means what? S is hit the fan. Okay. The CW will also be S. Then we'll go to stand down, it'll go to a dash and two dots. CW is D. Okay? Pretty much gives you a way of doing what? Really quickly realizing what's going on and what our status is. Okay? And we'll leave the stand down up usually for about four hours after we actually stand down. That's so everybody knows that we're down and we're not doing anything. And then we'll go in and change it back to normal operations. Myself, I haven't sent it yet to you, Jim. I gotta send you the codes to be able to activate that and Stacy. We're the three plus Dale, WB9SDL has the codes, but the three primary staff people are the ones that can make the changes in the computer um, to change that for Oxcom. The K4GW repeater, they're working on putting that on there as well for us, hopefully with the same codes. Uh, and I know that 64 and the 275 repeater will also ultimately have it. Ultimately, the goal is to have all of our repeaters function the same. We also have readiness conditions. Awareness, and this might be in your email. We might just say, for example, you will have the initial alert. And it'll say alert. Condition four. Just means, hey guys, be paying attention to what's going on out there. Something could happen. We've got a weather situation or any number of things. It also might be we have a civil disorder potential. We can come into play with civil disorder now. Because what are we? Communicators, eyes and ears. What can be attacked? What can be attacked in civil and terrorism events? Anything. Infrastructure. Communications. That's one of their primary points. They can take out that communications, they're good to go. Condition three, which is caution, is usually going to come up when we do it on a weather watch issue. Um, We'll put out an alert condition three when we do a weather watch, and we'll say whether or not we're going to stand up the weather net based upon what we see. A little bit more, these are some of the reasons we might throw that out. High winds. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's pretty amazing. I watched my tower in the last major winds storm we had not too long ago. Because I looked at my gauge, and my gauge was talking 72. And I was like, that can't be right. Because if it's 72, my tower was leaning over. You know, and of course it wasn't. I knew it wasn't going to. But what really amazed me, the tower was just sitting up there where I saw I looked at the two verticals I had on each side of my shed, and they were both like this. It was just like, normally they're here, and they were both at the same angle, just a couple of degrees at the top. They were just kind of moving. They were just staying there in the wind. The wind died down. They come back. Very little movement. I was like, I'm impressed. Nothing bent over. So... But that was a wind, couple of wind gusts. All right, condition two is alert. Means we've probably got a warning going on. We've got sustained winds over 60. Or if the Forsyth County Emergency Management issues a level two. If they go to level two, we're going to level two. No matter what it is, we're going to level two when they go. The condition one, of course, means dangers happen. That's going to be with your severe weather primarily, and that's to let you know that, hey, yeah, we might have an alert, but we're in condition on what we got severe weather occurring. This is another way of telling you, in case you miss the same weather radar radio, you miss it on your cell phone when the beep went off, you missed it, the EAS message that came across. This is another way of telling you we got severe weather. Do what, Jim? You guys are laughing back there. I just killed my knee on the thing. So I missed that the first time. Can you do it again? <laughs> I hear you. I promise you, we are like almost done. Badge and credentialing. We're getting ready to put badges out. 
If you haven't seen the ID badges, there's two badges. We have one that's issued to Grump ECAP and one issued to Puss ECAP. One's green, one's blue. Green is issued to people that are trainees that come right in. They haven't got the ICS courses or anything like that done. They get this. We still use them, but only with qualified people. This is people that get qualified. Most of you will be receiving one of these. We're going to take your happy snapshot next month. We're going to get the word out. And we're going to take your happy snapshot here with a white background, and it will be put on your ID card. If you want to, I can do go to your cameras and do photos here so you can have them available. Stacy's so, going to do Well, them. I mean, the people are here. I don't know if we got time. I got a rock. Okay. Right, if anybody wants to stay, I'll do it. Yeah, I got I got a person coming in from my team. <clears throat> you may not, like me, you may not have shaved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would prefer to give people advanced notice that way they, okay. they can look good. Because we would prefer you to have a golf shirt on other than a t-shirt. We want you to kind of look semi-professional. Because these are the IDs. These are your official ID. That's what you're going to wear when you walk into the OC. Okay. And so these will be issued. All right. You get a blue badge if you completed basic training, which is the four, the, the four ICS courses, which you've all already done, or should have, plus this course. That's minimum. That's your minimum basic qualification. Those that complete those four and this are qualified as a communicator. Okay. That's your first qualification. And if you've completed the EOC NCS course at all, you then get EOC put on your badge. Still says communicator, but it adds down here to EOC, the bottom. And if you complete the Web EOC course, you then become a communications lead that says EOC CL. Okay. And of course, you have the ability to take the ARRL courses. If, they, if people want me to put their basic MCOM course on, I'm more than willing to do it. I am an instructor for it. Uh, it is a two day course and it's more intense than this. And it's a whole lot more repetitions, unless I can pare it down. Are you going to teach it and when? I can teach it. If I've got enough interest in it, I will set one up and teach it. I am an instructor for ARR. I was one of the first in the state to be certified. So I'm more than happy to do it. Or you can take it on the week online for nine weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Online, it's, it's scheduled as a nine-week course. It's recommended to take it over nine weeks. So we would learn nine weeks in two days? I don't know, but trust me, I took it. It didn't take me nine weeks. Um, it took me about four and a half. And that really wasn't working that hard and diligently on it. Okay. The blue badges will give you They'll either have ESC or blank, and it will ultimately give you access and the authority to go where you need to be. Okay. Green badges are radio operators, everybody else is a communicator or a comedy. And your go kits, this is what you carry. Remember you were asking about some forms? This is just some basic stuff you need to carry on credentialing. Carry a copy of your certificate, hard copies. Of your 100, 200, 700, 800. If you have three and four hundred, carry those as well. Carry your EC uh, 001 or the MCOM 101. I will be sending out certificates. With you carry a copy of your license, and if you complete the OXCOM or any of the DHS certificate courses, carry those copies as well in your box. Put them in a nice little folder, put them in a note, mine are in a notebook. So when I walk into an EOC, in Haywood County or on the coast, and our mercy manager says, let me see your credentials. I just reach in my box, pull out my book, open it up, and he flips through it. He says, yeah, you're qualified. Then you go here. Because okay, they're going to verify what your qualifications are. 
The end is near. Remember, I keep promising that. Okay. Standard uniform. We have patches going to look. They're coming out. I'm hoping, hopeful to have them sometime here. This they told me they should be here this week. We're going to have patches and stickers. The shirt vendor fell through. Um, they, after committing to it, said, "No, actually, we're changing our business plan, and we're not going to do this anymore like that." So we were searching for a different shirt vendor, but ultimately. The goal is to have a golf shirt that has our emblem right here. Khaki pants or similar, no jeans, the golf shirt or similar. And why do we want it to work that way? We look professional. We look professional. And if we have something that looks uniform, that's what we want to do. We normally would not wear an air vest indoors. Number one, they get hot. But number two, we are there as part of a team. We become integrated in those teams. We do not wear our call sign hats, club vest, etc. Don't need to wear them. It's probably you're not going to use your call sign anyway. All right. Now, if we're working public service events, tour to tangle with, still, khaki pants are our preferred, but if you can wear jeans if they're nice looking, not frayed, you don't want you to wear your jeans that you were working on the farm bar, uh, you know, tractor with, we don't want you to wear those or a sweaty t-shirt. We want you to look good when we're out there because we're representing who? Our organization. We want to have pride in ourselves and pride in who we are and what we do. But we're in Alaska that gave us t-shirts to wear. We were supposed to wear those. Stand up. You've got yours out there. Oh, Stand up. That is the t-shirt. That's one of the t-shirts that MS handed out last year. It's the communications volunteer. They hand us those t-shirts. We're welcome to wear them. We're encouraged to wear them. Because it's handed to us by the event organizer for that event. In that case, we're more than willing to wear them and we want to wear them. It's supporting them. They're our served agency at that point. Finally, <coughs> folks, we don't self-deploy. The quickest way to get this taken away from you is to show up on an incident. Self-deploy and show up on an incident. Or to show up at the EOC. Or to call me and say, I'm responding to the EOC because I heard it's been stood up. If you don't hear it from me, you don't make a move. You don't hear it from Jim or Stacy, because they're the staff. We haven't contacted you and said move out. You don't move out. First time you do, this comes away. We've already done that. I know I mentioned this before with the orange one that we have. That's one reason we're going to this. One, because the state's requested us to. And two, because we've already had that event occur. Okay, we had a person walk up in the Atkin County to an incident in the Atkin County and walked up to one of the first responders that was there. They had their little Orange Aries badge. Said, Who's in charge? I'm here to handle communications. Yeah. And of course, they pointed them to the incident commander. They walked over and introduced themselves to the incident commander, who promptly said, what the what? <laughs> Turned around, picked up his cell phone, because he happens to be a good friend, called me. 10 o'clock in the evening. Carla, do you know this individual? Yes, I do. Can you come to this location? Yeah, why? I'll tell you when you get here. I'll be there shortly. Got over there. Nice big incident scene. I'm like, what the hell? We're walking up. The incident commander. Of course, at this point, I've got my other stuff in there. And I go walking up and look at him. What's going on, James? He goes, 
Well, I've got him on the other side of the pumper over here with one of our guys. And he said, he just walked up, told me he, were, he was here to manage communications for him. And I'm like, thank you, appreciate the phone call. He goes, not a problem. I said, I hope this doesn't hurt anything. He said, nope. He said, well, we need you guys. You should trust me to be here. I said, all right. Walked around, put my hand on his shoulder, said, walk with me a little bit. We go walking away. I said, let me see that orange badge you got. He gave me his orange badge and put it in my pocket. I summarily told him, you ever show up on another incident scene, you will not be walked away by me. You will be walked away and never play in the Gentleman has not been back since. He was young, he was new, he was energetic, but he did not understand that he almost destroyed about nine months of work with Yadkin County in that two second interval. Had it been somebody other than a good friend of mine, we probably would have been back where Yadkin County's been for 10 years or more in that two second point. But because he was a friend, our relationship with Yadkin County is still here. We want to maintain that, so please don't self deploy. I can't stress that enough. We have negotiations and things going on now with not only Forsyth County, but with other counties that are delicate. I mean, these are eggshell delicate, and it will not take anything to crumble months and months of negotiations and work. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so please, if you don't hear it from me, Jim, or Stacy, don't go. I know it's tempting, but don't know. Just hang back. Trust me, you'll get times to play, and we will make that happen. Remember, we're not in charge. They can always refuse service. Okay? That's one reason we don't self-deploy, because if we don't self-deploy, they don't have the opportunity to do what? Refuse. To refuse service and get upset. Random questions. All right, weird questions. <laughs> I have another question. I really good question. I asked a couple people at once, but I want your opinion. So you're at a station mm -hmm. after a tornado. Then you get an alert that a tornado is on its own. The second one's come in and it's turned straight to the station. You stay online or do you? Well, personally, I consider one of two options, and the first one is duck for cover. Okay. Second one might be put my head between my legs, but you know, I think the first one is probably the better one. Duck for cover, self-preservation. If you're in danger, move. Seek shelter. Your your life is more important than any radio communication. If you got impending danger upon you, get out of danger. We tell that to first responders all the time. If you're in danger, get out of danger. Okay. I'm in the middle of the intersection directing traffic and there's two tractor trailers coming at me. They even want to slow it down. <laughs> Am I going to stand here? No. No, I'm going to get out of danger because these two are coming together. Okay. So I'm going to get out of danger. Flag, you saw that bright green vest, they were aiming. <laughs> I was going to mention this earlier, uh, but uh, there's another posting for the web DOC. Uh, next training is the 26th of June. They just posted it like this morning. I, I think I just got posted. Yeah, uh, 1 to 4 p.m. in Kernersville on the 26th of June. That'll be at station 42, probably. I think it is. That's the new station. Yeah, that's the web DOC training. Should be station 42. That's usually where you're going to do any training in Kernersville, being 42. That's their new head, cool fire department headquarters and training facility. So that's a Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. So it's Wednesday afternoon. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous training facility. Are we talking about the one on 66? Yes, the brand new one just opened up. And that is awesome. And, uh, we held a course. We, we actually got into it. They, they, they pushed a occupancy permit just for the training side of the station. They were still working on the administration and pumper side. 
but they got us into the trading side. So we got pretty good tour of the station before they even opened it up and put pumpers in there. And it looks nice. It's sweet. Kerners will put a bunch, a ton, ton of money in that station. Yeah. Is he paid for it? Yeah. Trust me, it's money well spent. You're going to have some highly trained firefighters. So we use that a lot with the county to train on that side. We try to do training both sides of the county uh, as we can. All right, any other questions? These, these are my IMT pants, so you can wear these. These are perfectly acceptable. These are uniform. These are 501 duty pants. Yep. 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 They're perfectly fine. Sometimes I wear these, sometimes I wear green ones, sometimes I wear black ones. All depends on what, what I want to do, but my shirt's black all the time when I walk in there anyway. It's got that. It's got the county out. It's got that in the one. Yeah. <laughs>